today we're going to be talking about deep water culture, which is essentially a hydroponic method where you actually don't grow in a substrate or any media. You actually use what would be known as clay pellets or any other inert substance to keep the plant upright. Essentially, it's the root zone that you're targeting, where what you're doing is supplying nutrient rich and aerated uh, solution or water to the product, um, to the actual roots itself. You may use beneficial microorganisms to help the uptake in the roots. Um, the key thing is the aeration and also keeping the pH balance going. Now, there's some clear benefits to deep water culture, essentially the ability to obviously do mass uh, hydroponic grows. So the ability, if you can just get the nutrient feed right and buffer the water appropriately, you can feed a whole array of um, trays and tanks. However, the downside is that you need the plants in the same level of vegetation, the same stage of growing, and if there's contamination, it's going to rapidly spread to all those root zones. So that's one of the benefits and drawbacks you'll see, but deep water culture is definitely an interesting one for hydroponic growers, so we wanted to mention it. Now, getting to the news highlights. The biggest ones are one's positive, one's negative, depending on how you see it. Aurora Sky, Aurora being the second largest capitalized company, uh, you'll see a plane airport in the background. That's why it's called Aurora Sky. But this facility that has 50,000 square meters of cultivation capacity, massive levels of automation, was only ever operating at about 25% of its capacity. Aurora came out last week and announced that they will be shutting down this facility for good. Um, major setback for the industry in terms of commercial aspirations but i think a lot of high consumers realized that there was too much focus on standardization and you know a very basic product that came out of this facility you know that artisanal effort that went into the passion of cultivation that i think they try to scale too much to make a uniform product and in that process unless it was all going to go to medical and they had the capacity for global production of medical they were always going to lose out in that space if they were competing in responsible adult use markets. And now talking about better access, Thailand, the minister has come out and said starting the 9th of June next month, they will be providing over, they have a stockpile of 1 million cannabis plants to be given to patients. The thing in Thailand to remember is you still need to be registered with the government to receive this plant. Uh, it's supposed to be encouraging home use, primarily the use of it in teas and the rest. I'm a little questioning on the level of THC that will be provided in these plants. Um, we know that extracted products in Thailand can only still contain 0.2% THC. There is probably likely to be a low level of THC. I don't know. We will find out after the 9th of June once a testing lab actually tests the cannabis that the state is providing in Thailand. Back to you, Trenton. I still think it's a, an amazing thing to be giving out a million plants to your people. You know, that's a real real overt statement that right guys cannabis is here to stay it can be used for medicine learn how to grow it uh that's that's certainly one way of uh, bringing the industry online can you imagine if they did that here oh, there'd be guys queuing up waiting for their plants so.